For this section, I'm going to do four example problems. Um, the first two examples, I'm going to be making minor modifications to two of your homework problems. For the third example, I'm going to make one that is going to have a little twist on it for figuring out the height of the region. And then the fourth one, I'm going to rotate it around a line that is not the x-axis or the y-axis. So you see something that looks like each of the various types of homework problems that you'll have. First thing that I want to remember is the formula. The formula is 2 pi times the integral from A to B of the circumference times the height. Actually, this one now, 2 pi r. So it's the radius times the height times the thickness. So that's what I want to remember as my formula. That's the way I remember the formula. So first thing I need to do is I need to draw my curves. So x equals 0 is the y-axis. x equals 1 would be this line. And y equals x minus x squared plus 1 is an upside down parabola. And it would continue on this way. But this is the region right here that I want to revolve. It says to revolve it around the y-axis. Okay, so this is the region that I have that's revolved around the y-axis. You can see I could use the disk method up to here to find it out. But once I get here, the same equation is the upper curve and the lower curve, so I could not use the washer method for that. So this is one that I have to use shells on. So the first thing we're doing with doing cylindrical shells is to draw an arbitrary shell. So I'm going to draw an arbitrary shell. There is my arbitrary shell. And now it's to write the integral. The integral is 2 pi from the lower limit, which is the smallest shell I can draw, which would be 0 to the upper limit, which is the thickest shell I can draw, in this case is 1, and it's the radius. The radius is the distance from the center of rotation to the shell. The distance from the x-axis to the shell is just x. The height, the height of my shell is the distance from the lower curve to the upper curve. The distance from y equals 0 to a curve is the equation of the curve. And my thickness is how wide my shell is. And my shell is delta x or dx thick. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to multiply this out, so distribute. So I end up with x squared minus x cubed plus x dx. Anti-differentiate and evaluate. So I have 2 pi x cubed over 3 minus x to the fourth over 4 plus x squared over 2. And I want to evaluate this one between 0 and 1. actually going to do the evaluation here. So it's 2 pi times the upper limit minus the lower limit. Track the lower limit. So notice how every single example, when I'm doing the evaluation, I put the square brackets. I put parentheses for my upper limit, parentheses for my lower limit with a minus sign. I do that so I don't end up with sign errors. My recommendation is you do that also. So I'm going to evaluate it at 1 which is 1 cubed over 3 minus 1 to the 4th over 4 
plus 1 squared over 2. And I put zeros in there. 0 cubed over 3 minus 0 to the 4th over 4 plus 0 squared over 2. The last term evaluates to 0. So I end up with 2 pi times 1 third minus 1 fourth plus 1 half. The lowest common denominator is 12. So I have 4 twelfths minus 3 twelfths plus 6 twelfths. 4 minus 3 is 1. 1 plus 6 is 7. 7 times 2 is 14 twelfths pi, which simplifies to 7 sixth pi units cubed, which would be the volume. So again, I just use, I don't memorize the formula in terms of x's and f of x's. I just memorize that it's 2 pi times the radius times the height times the thickness, and I figure out what each one of those values are. For the second example, I modified your homework problem 15. The curve I'm rotating is, or the region I'm rotating is the region between the cube root of x, x equals 0, x equals 8, and y equals 0. I'm going to rotate this one about the x-axis. So here's 8. The cube root of x between x equals 0, x equals 8, and y equals 0 is that region. I'm going to rotate it about the x-axis. And notice that when I do my rotation, I could actually do this problem as a disk method. But I'm going to do this one as a shell method because that's the directions of the problem. Okay? Be careful on a test. Sometimes there will be one that says, use, just find the volume or write an integral that can be used to find the volume. You may be able to find the integral two different ways. I think a couple of your homework problems today actually has you find it using it, the disk slash washer method and the shell method to make sure you get the same answer. So that is what I'm going to do. But first thing I'm going to do is the shell method. So the first thing I want to do is I want to draw an arbitrary shell. So an arbitrary shell. is going to look like this. Notice I drew my shell so the sides of the shell are parallel to the axis of revolution. Okay, so for the shell method, my integral is 2 pi. Okay, and now I need to think about what the thinnest shell is. Well, my thinnest shell is going to be this center section right here. And I'm integrating along the y. So my thinnest shell is going to be 0. My thickest shell is going to be 2. My radius that I'm worried about is the distance between my center of rotation and the shell. The distance between the x-axis and the shell is this equation right here. But I do not want it in terms of x. I need it in terms of y because it's in the y distance. So I need to do this. x is equal to y to the 1 um, actually, that's x to the one-third, so that is y cubed. So my r is y cubed. My height is the distance between here and here. Well, the distance between here and here is whatever x is. Okay? Well, x is, in this case, is equal to y cubed. Well, that's not the distance I want. I want the distance of the purple region. Well, the distance between here and here is 8. The distance between here and here is y cubed. 
So the distance that I want is that one, which would be 8 minus y cubed. My thickness is the thickness of the shell along the axis that I'm integrating on. So that would be dy. I'm going to multiply it out. So I get 8y cubed minus y to the sixth dy. I'm going to anti-differentiate and evaluate. So 2 pi comes along for the ride. Add one to the exponent, I get 4. Dividing by 4 is going to give me 2y to the fourth. Add one to the exponent, divide by the new exponent. So it's y to the seventh over 7. Evaluate it between 0 and 2. So to evaluate, I get 2 pi, upper limit, minus lower limit. So I'm going to put a 2 in here, so I get 2 times 2 to the 4th, minus 2 to the 7th over 7. Then 2 times 0 to the 4th, minus 0 to the 7 over 7. Last term of value is 2, 0. 2 to the 4th times 2 is 2 to the 5th, 32. Uh, 2 to the 7th is 128. 2 pi is still there. Lowest common denominator is 7, which would be 224 sevenths. Minus 128 sevenths times 2 pi. 224 minus 128. 96 sevenths. 96 times 2 is 200 minus 8, which would be 192 pi. Units cubed. So the tricky one here is that my height, I actually have to think about what my height is. Okay? So it's the right hand curve minus the left hand curve. Right hand curve is 8. The left hand curve is y cubed. Okay, so that's where the trick came in here. And again, I told you this one, I could have done it two different methods. So I'm gonna write that number down I got. And we're now going to do this one using the shell method. Not the shell method, but the disk method. And we're going to see, and hopefully, if we did all our math correctly, that we'll get the exact same answer. So here I have the graph of x cubed, or the cube root of x, rotated around y equals x. I now have that shape. This is 2. And now I'm going to do an arbitrary slice perpendicular to the axis of revolution. I look at my slice and I ask myself, is it a disc or a washer? And it, I see that it is a disc. So I know that my formula is going to be the integral from 0 to 8 of pi radius squared dx. And my radius is the distance from the x-axis to the curve. The distance between the x-axis and the curve is the equation of the curve, which is going to be x to the one-third. Now I'm going to anti-differentiate and evaluate. So that gives me pi times x to the 2 thirds divided by uh, x, x to the 4 thirds. Add 1 to the exponent. Divided by the new exponent. Dividing by 5 thirds is multiplying by 3 fourths. And I want to evaluate this between 0 and 8. So that's pi times the upper limit, actually I can make that a little smaller, minus the lower limit, 
So I have three times eight to the four thirds over four minus three times zero to the four thirds over four. The last term evaluates to zero. The cube root of eight is two. Two to the fourth is 16. 16 divided by four is four. Four times three is 12. And I end up with 12 pi. Which is a different answer. So I need you to figure out why I got a different answer. <laughs>